I first sang that song when I was about three years old, or so my mother tells me. It's a song that goes back into the time of slavery. It's a song that informed people that even though they were in a devastating situation, that they still had a light that they could shine. My name is Reggie Harris. I'm a musician, a song leader, a storyteller, a songwriter, an educator. And my life started in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, a city of brotherly love. It started there because my family were part of the six million people who migrated from the South, starting in about 1901. And my family helped me to light my light. That song has been part of my life and part of my story for all of these years. A story that includes those who came with no luggage, those who found themselves in the institution of slavery and yet were informed by their songs and their stories, which I now get to tell. Their stories about the Underground Railroad, about the Civil War, and on the Underground Railroad, well, they rose those songs up, the sorrow songs, as Frederick Douglass called them, the spirituals that told people how they could make it to freedom. And indeed, the stories and the songs came together. They taught me that I, in my life, would have to wade in the water, as Frederick Douglass, Harriet Tubman, and so many others did. The songs are part of the story. A story that brings us right into the present. Who were those children all dressed in red? God's gonna trouble the water. Must be the ones that Moses led. God's gonna trouble the water. Well, who were those children all dressed in white? God's gonna trouble the water. Free at last, free at last, thank God Almighty, we're free at last. Free at last, free at last, thank God Almighty, we're free at last. Free at last, free at last, thank God Almighty, we're free at last. Free at last, free at last, thank God Almighty, we Free at last. That's the chorus of a song that Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. used to close his I Have a Dream speech. That famous speech sent shockwaves around the world. And yet it was part of a long history of people calling out for things to be better, for equality and justice to reign. And for that dream that had spread through the years from the time of slavery to his present day. That dream was inspired by the words of people like Langston Hughes, who said, hold fast to dreams. For when dreams die, life is a broken winged bird that cannot fly. Hold fast to dreams. For when dreams go, life is a barren field frozen with snow. I grew up hearing the words of Langston Hughes and the words of Maya Angelou, the words of James Baldwin. They have informed my story. And my story has been informed by the experiences of a lifetime, of being able to go outside of my neighborhood to attend what were called better schools, meaning white kids went there. And by attending those schools, the perspective of the world changed, shifted, and widened. 
those are now part of my story. My story is also of being a descendant of a woman named Bib Anna, a slave on a plantation in Ashland, Virginia, a plantation called Hickory Hill, owned by a Confederate general named Williams Carter Wickham. And Williams Carter Wickham had six children by Bib Anna, and from that, my family began. And so that is my story too. It's a story that was made even more real by meeting the descendants of that family and taking a walk on that plantation. On a day in November 2012, Lisa Wickham and I took a walk on the Hickory Hill plantation ground. And from time to time, our eyes met. As years melted away, years of history and emotion. And that is where this song comes from, Hickory Hill. Now that we 
as they die, opening the door to courageous conversations. History, despite its wrenching pain, cannot be unlived. But if faced with courage, need not be lived again. Those are the words of the great poet Maya Angelou who wrote them to tell us, to remind us that though our national struggle has been hard, that we do not have to be defined by our past. My own journey has created an opportunity for me to be a bridge builder. I have studied the lives of people like Fannie Lou Hamer and John Lewis, C.T. Vivian, Rosa Parks, all of those amazing voices that stepped up when the moment came. And we too, if we are willing to have those courageous conversations and to look into our past for those lessons, can indeed engage each other in this new landscape of change. And we can point the way to a more courageous and cohesive future. We will not rest until the storm is over. We will not lay this burden down. We will keep each other strong. We will love and carry on till we stand all together on solid ground. We will not rest till the storm is over. We will not lay this burden down. We will keep each other strong. We will love and carry on till we stand all together on solid ground. We will not rest till the storm is over. Well, we will not lay this burden down. We will keep each other strong. We will love and carry on till we stand all together on solid ground. I know that you're weary. We all feel the pain. Sometimes the actions of the world will try us all again. But I believe there's a better day and it's coming our way. That's why we're raising our voices as we work Today we will not rest until the storm is over. Well, we will not lay this burden down. Well, we will keep each other strong. We will love and carry on till we stand all together on solid ground. Till we stand all together on solid ground. Till we stand all together on solid ground. Thank you for your time and let's keep on keeping on.